Hi, my name is Darius from Team Solo Mid, and this is my basic champion guide to Fiora. For solo queue Fiora, you basically want to pick her anytime you can if you're trying to play her, because in solo queue, people generally have a hard time closing out the game, and the longer the game goes, the easier it is for Fiora's late game. There's a lot of outplay potential for all champions, so it, when you get to late game, it becomes harder and harder to deal with Fiora since she can outplay like, you know, key ultimates such as maybe Zed ult or Malphite ult or even Lulu ult. And every time she parries with W, she stuns the target. And what that means is that one ability just like negates so much. So as the game goes on as and other ultimates become more valuable, if you can outplay that, you can solo carry the game for your team. It's all based on reaction time and, you know, predicting the enemy's movements. But if you get really good at Fiora, she becomes a champion that will just eventually carry the game. For laning on Fiora, you generally have Q in lane. And using the passive to the utmost ability is very important. Um, when laning as Fiora against an enemy opponent, you'll notice a one-fourth, like, looking circle thing on the enemy target that's your passive and you want to queue towards that point when trading in lane um, what it'll give you is some movement speed it'll put some true damage on them and it'll heal you for a little bit if the circle is on the opposite side you can always walk out of range in lane and walk back in and it'll reset the little one fourth circle and it's RNG, but if you can get it to reset on your side where you can just, you know, auto the enemy pretty easily, it helps a lot. For team fights on Fiora, you don't want to be the first person going into the fight because as a squishy damage dealer, you want to kind of play back and try to get resets or just like slow damage on the front line or maybe if you're diving the back line if someone's low. Um, how you want to do it is if a target is low, you can ult them and just try to chase them down and proc your ult. If you're able to proc your ult within the fight, it drops down something like a Janna ultimate where it just heals you and your entire team in it. And when you get that reset, it's a very, very high chance that you're probably gonna win the team fight. When fighting an enemy in a duel or in a team fight, one thing that you can do is when you decide to ult them, you can try to proc your passive circle on them first so for example if there's a circle right in front of them you want to walk up and auto the passive proc and then ultimate and then use your E on your ultimate proc and then Q to another side so you can instantly get three stacks of true damage onto your opponent and what this does is it adds um, that extra like passive tick of true damage and heal to your character and sometimes it might be the difference between winning and losing in a one versus one fight. Um, it's important to wait for the ult to come up because if you auto the passive proc and then you ultimate, it takes like one second for your ultimate to fully come up and if you auto attack too soon you won't get that proc. As Fiora, it's actually really important to work on your reaction time and prediction abilities. You can probably have the worst reaction time of the world, but if you're expecting it, your reactions will be better. A good example is when, when Vayne uses E, she makes a sound, she makes a certain movement, and when you're expecting it, you can get ready to press W. If you're able to W Vayne's E, then you can get a stun on her and you, she's basically dead. In a lot of Fiora matchups, what makes or breaks the champion is the W. So the better you get at it, the better you get at Fiora. And it also is the difference between winning one versus ones most of the time, or maybe even winning a team fight. For runes on Fiora, I like to go 15 AD and either flat armor or armor per level, depending on how bad the lane is. And then for blues, I like to go MR or MR per level blues. And sometimes it's best to go flat CDR or CDR per level. It all depends on the severity of your lane and how hard the lane is. And the easier the lane is, the better it is to get scaling. 
for masteries on Fiora, I like to go 21-9 in the offensive tree. Make sure to get the crit mastery where it increases your attack speed because Fiora's second E always crits. So that way you'll get the attack speed from that mastery point. For skill order on Fiora, generally most people start Q, but if you're trying to kill a ward level one or if you're in a team fight level one, it's not a bad idea to auto and then level up E and then get two hits on a trinket ward. Generally it doesn't happen, but it's mostly Q. You end up maxing Q first and then E second for the damage. And the reason why you max W last is because no matter how much you level up W, the reaction will pretty much be the same, just slightly more damage. For item build on Fiora, there are two different ways to go about it. Whether you're going for a split push, which is the full lifesteal build, you start by building Hydra, and then you go into either Bloodthirster or, es or Essence Reaver. I suggest Bloodthirster against squishier targets, and I suggest Essence Reaver against tankier targets. The reason for this is, as you're fighting tankier targets, you begin to run out of mana. The CDR and the damage from Essence Reaver is pretty much identical in terms of value because all Bloodthirster gives you is an extra shield. So that's also personal preference and after that you have an option of going Black Cleaver or Spirit Visage. Spirit Visage combined with two lifesteal items is extremely broken. So if you ever get your ult proc off you're probably never gonna die as long as there's no ignite on you. As for Black Cleaver, it's better for killing targets faster in terms of squishy targets. Not so much the tanks, but it generally is another item that helps you kill people. For all the other items, it doesn't really matter because at this point you're pretty much into late game, so no matter what you build, it's probably going to be good. Thanks for watching my basic champion guide to Fiora. Make sure to check out more champion guides at lowclass.com. Certain melees that gank him a lot. A good example would be Olaf is commonly good against Aurelia, but against good Aurelia players, it's very hard to abuse.